Okay, now we can start. Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another Busted Knuckle video. And today's video guys is going to be the top 5 performance mods that I would do to a 94 to 98 Mustang GT. And again, I do have a goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year by December 31st. So if you guys could please help me out, hit that sub button down below, hit the like button, turn on that notification bell, stay up to date with all the videos. I really appreciate it and it would really be a big help to my channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. So number one is definitely going to be headers and exhaust. And you say, bust a knuckle, why do you want to get headers and exhaust? Well, for one, you always want to wake up your neighbors at 6.30 in the morning before you go to work every morning. It's always fun getting death threats to your family from your neighbors that's 90 years old across the street. But on a real note, guys, you got to get the headers and exhaust because the factory exhaust on these cars have two catalytic converters, two resonators, and two dual chamber mufflers that, you know, just really quiet the car down, don't help out performance really that good and they're more emissions friendly than they are horsepower friendly. So whenever you put the headers and exhaust on, of course it's gonna free up some airflow, free up a little bit of horsepower. But the main reason guys, is gonna make the car sound so much better. These cars, as many of you know, they sound incredible with headers and exhaust on them. The four sixes, the five O's, you know, they just sound really good. So number one on my list was yes, get headers and exhaust. Number two for me was get a cold air intake. And as many of you guys may know, my car is carb swapped, but it wasn't always carb swapped. It was fuel injected at one point and it was fuel injected with the E303 cam. So the reason why I say you get a cold air intake is because as many of you may know, the factory air box comes over this way and sits right here in these Mustangs. And I don't really like the way the factory ones look. They're really ugly and not very pretty at all. So one of the main reasons I got a cold air intake for this car when it was fuel injected was because it makes the car look a lot better under the hood. It does free up a little bit of horsepower because it's smoother flowing tubing and stuff like that. And of course, you're not going to get a crazy amount of horsepower off a of cold air intake, but it mainly looks good gives you that little extra engine induction noise. And it also is a cheap modification. I think you can get a pretty cheap eBay one for maybe like 140-ish dollars, probably less than that. But it definitely spiffs up the engine bay, makes it look better, and adds that little bit of extra horsepower. And number three, it really doesn't have to do with performance, but it makes the car's driving experience a lot better. So let's go inside the car. That looks good, okay. Anyways, I hope you guys can see me. You should be able to. Anyways, number three is a short shifter. The reason why I say short shifter is because many of you guys know this. The stock shifters are just really tall, really clunky looking, and just just look like a school bus shifter, like a floor-mounted four-wheel drive truck shifter. They're not very notchy. They don't have a good feel, and you also get that dreaded third gear miss shift with the factory with the factory shifters. In my car, I do have an SVE short throw shifter from LMR, and I really like it. I do think the throws could be a little bit shorter, but for the price I paid for it, it was only like 160-ish, maybe 159 bucks. It's got a really good bang for the buck. It makes the shifts a lot better, a lot closer than the factory one, don't get me wrong. So for the price I paid for it, I'm well happy with it. And I got this shift knob to go on top of it because I like the old school white ball style shift knob. So that's number three, guys, a short shifter. So that brings us to number four, which is gonna be the rear gear ratio. Now my personal preference for the 94 to 98s is either a 373 for the automatic or a 410 for the five speed. And the reason why I say 373 for the automatic is because you only got four gears. I know the gear ratios are a little bit different with overdrive and stuff, but I've noticed that the 373s just go better for the automatic. And the factory gear ratio in this thing was a 308, which was just awful. I could literally top out third gear at like 110 miles an hour, which to me, that's just too much for a car that has no power stop so i ended up going with the 410 and man was it so much better than the 308 it makes the car feel so much quicker and i'm sure it does make it a little bit faster probably not as much as you would think but it definitely helps out a whole bunch that one two three shift is a lot quicker you're not staying in first gear for a millennium second gear for a millennium and third gear for forever is what it felt like before i swapped it and the rear end i went with actually was a yukon locker with 410 ring and pinion from four performance and 31 spline Moser axles. The car also does have an aluminum drive shaft as well. But if you want something that makes your car feel so much better and so much quicker, definitely go with a 373 or 410 for these Mustangs. So that's gonna be number four. Definitely change the rear ends in these things to something better. And moving on to number five, number five is going to be heads, cam, and intake. Now this is going to be the most expensive part that I've done to this car so far. I probably have about three grand just in the heads, cam, and intake swap. But is it well worth it? 
Absolutely. It's been the best thing I've done for the car so far besides the rear end. The heads cam and intake that I used on it, as many of you may know from my other videos, but for those that are new, I got TrickFlow 11R cylinder heads with an E303 cam, and of course I've mentioned already that it's carb swap with a Demon 650 carb. But as far as performance goes, that was the best modification that I've done so far. And I did it all at once. Besides the camshaft, I already had the camshaft, but I did the cams intake or the heads and intake and carburetor all at once. But if you guys want to make some serious gains with the small block Fords, the 302s, even the even the 4.6s, change the heads, change the camshafts, get you a good intake on it, and they're gonna make a lot more power. So I'll give you guys an example of how big of a gain it actually was. So I've ran the car in the eighth mile with the E303 cam, factory heads, intake swap, and carb swap. I ran a 9.0 at 72 miles an hour. And with just changing the heads, I ran a 8.1, which was my best so far, at 88.63 miles an hour, I claim it 89, with a 1.8960 foot. I picked up almost a second on the stopwatch just by changing the heads, which is a gigantic difference. And I picked up what, that's what, like almost 20 miles an hour. So that lets you know how much better a good aluminum cylinder head is versus a factory head that, you know, is junk. So if you guys wanna make these cars a lot better, definitely heads cam and intake change. But that is gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you guys liked the video. And if you did like it, be sure to smash that like button down below. Once again, I do have a goal of reaching a thousand subs by the end of this year, by December 31st. So if you guys could click that sub button down below, it'd really help me out and I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, it's your boy Busted Knuckle. We'll see you later.